put you guys today we're taking a look at how to fix Windows update problems in Windows 10 and Windows 11. This is a common error code that we're going to be taking a look at here. As you can see, the error code, when you go to update, it fails and you'll get an error code coming up on the screen, which I'll show you very shortly. So this error code was happening uh, to Welsh Tony on our Discord server. If you want to check his YouTube channel out, I'll leave a link in the video description for his YouTube channel. He's trying to reach uh, so many watch hours, so if you can help him out there, watch some of his content and get his watch hours up for him, be much appreciated. So you can see here, we've got 0x800 10922. That is the error code that is happening on his machine, and that's what we're going to be fixing today. I'll show you basically the steps we took to try to fix and resolve uh, this problem. So first off, we went to the Reset Windows Update tool, and we went in there and used a bunch of features in here to reset uh, the Windows updates to hopefully try to rectify the problem. So just leave the link in the video description, download the tool, and get it installed onto the computer. Say yes to the user account control, and basically this little box will pop up here, say next, accept their terms and conditions, click next again, and then you can click next, next, and then just install it into the directory you want to install it to. Once we've got it here, right click on the icon and run this as administrator, say yes to the user account control, and then we'll have a bunch of options here for our language. I'm going to be going zero for English. Uh, say yes here or why, just to accept their terms and conditions. So I'm going to say why here. And next, we're going to go to option number two. This resets the Windows update components. So sometimes updates will come down and they get stuck uh, in the uh, folders of the Windows update components. And this can cause major problems and this will just clear these out and delete any old uh, software distribution downloads from Microsoft. It just empties the folders out. And when you go to update again, it should be nice and clean in there and you should have no issues. So let's just go ahead and let that finish off its thing. And once that's done, it's going to reset a bunch of settings. And uh, we've now see it's restarting the services. It has to stop the services uh, for the Windows updates to delete those files. And once it's done, it restarts them. Now we're going to delete all of the temporary files on in Windows, and that should remove those. And then once that's done, we're going to do number three here for deleting all those. Push Enter to continue. And now we need to move on to the next one, which in this case is going to be number six, which is run the system file checker tool. You can do this in command prompt if you want to do it there, which is SFC space forward slash scan now, and this will check. Uh, the system for in any in sort of integrity with the files and it will use a copy of those files to replace them if they're corrupted so basically run that check next up we've got one more in here that we're going to be doing which is uh, checks whether the image has been flagged as corrupted so we're just going to run number eight and let that go and once that's done it should say push any key to continue so we're just going to push on any key here and that, that should continue. So that is the tool done here now. You can restart the PC by typing number 19, but I'm just gonna continue here with the repair. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Right click on the start button and click on disk management. Another problem is the system reserved is too small. You can see it's 50 megabytes here. You want at least um, probably around about 500 megabytes on there i would say and to do this you can use the mini partition wizard tool which is free to use use the free version just remove this check mark here push next and then you can remove the uh, mini tool shadow maker uh, feature and we can also participate in customer experience if you wish i'm going to remove that check mark and click next and that will get installed on the system you have to use a third party tool to do this it makes it much more easier so we're just going to launch the mini tool. And now we can see here, what we need to do, this is our system reserve. It's only 50 megabytes. And sometimes when it's too small, it can cause errors. So we're just going to make this a bit bigger by shrinking down our C drive. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink, shrink down our C drive by about one gigabyte here. And we're going to use that one gigabyte on our system reserve. 
So just drag the little slider across until you see one gigabyte down here, unallocated space, click OK. And then once you've done that, you'll need to click on the apply button to apply those settings. It wants to restart the computer. So I'm going to say restart now. That's because Windows is in use and it needs to do it when it restarts. So let's go ahead and quickly click restart. And uh, I'll show you what happens once we restart the system. So the system's going to restart and you will see a black screen coming up with some text on it. That is a mini tool just doing its work. So just let that do its thing. There you go. It's just restart, resizing the partition. And you can see it processing down on the bottom there. That's now completed. And it now will uh, boot back up to Windows. So let's go ahead and get back to Windows because we need to go back into the mini tool partition wizard so we can uh, now use that space we've just created on our system reserve. So now let's go back to our system reserve. And you can see there's unallocated space. So we're going to extend this now. And all you need to do here is drag the slider and use that one gigabyte of unallocated space that we just created. So the slider in the middle here just slides backwards and forwards. And you can see it using up a lot of space that we just created on the allocated there. Click OK. And now we need to apply this again to set this in stone. And again, it's going to say yes here. It's in use. Restart the PC. And it will go ahead and extend that to one gigabyte or thereabouts. So let's just go ahead and let that do its thing. Takes a bit of time. But you can see it working away at the bottom, resizing partition down the very bottom of the screen there, going up in percentage. Let it do what it needs to do. And it will boot back up to Windows. And I'll show you that we've now extended our system reserve partition. And this is a free tool you can use, a mini tool, Partition Wizard. You see me use it quite a few times. It's a great bit of kit to have. And I'm just going to let that boot back up. Right click on the Start button and go to Disk Management. Inside Disk Management, you will see the partition now has it been expanded to just over one gigabyte. And that's plenty. So just leave that there. And then what you can do now is you can try your Windows updates to see whether that fixes the problem. So let's move on to the next fix, just in case these are not working. You don't have to do all of these fixes. You just use the ones until you fix your problem. Type in features, turn features on and off. Just go here and make sure the .NET framework are installed on this system. You can see there's some missing, so I'm going to put that in there. Click OK. And once we click OK, it's going to ask, do we want to pull these down uh, for us? So you can see, let Windows updates download these files. I'm going to say, Yes, let Windows updates do that for me. And that's going to go ahead and take a bit of time. I've speeded that process up and click close. Next, make sure you've got a good internet connection. Check your internet connections because sometimes it kicks you off if you're using Wi-Fi and that can cause error codes. So make sure you're using an Ethernet connection or a very good Wi-Fi connection that is not dropping out. So make sure that is in, uh, in place there. Next up, we're going to go to the Start button. And we're going to go settings. And what we're going to do here is just open up the settings window a little bit here. We're going to go down to update and security. Click on this one. Let me just expand this a bit so you can see it. There we go. And what we need to do here is go to Windows security and then open up the Windows security. And we're going to now go to the virus and threat protection. Click on here. And once we do this, you'll see scan options. Click on scan options and do a full system scan. Malware can cause problems with Windows updates, so do a full system scan. If you're not using Windows Defender, use whatever antivirus program you have on your system and do a full complete uh, system scan of your computer. And hopefully uh, you don't have any viruses. If you don't, you can move on to the next stage. Next up, we're going to go to the search box and type firewall. And Windows Defender Firewall. Now, if you're using a different firewall, just turn it off temporarily and we can try Windows updates afterwards. If you're using Windows Defender, just turn both of these off here. Put the radio button in both. Turn off Windows Defender. It will say not recommended, but we're only doing it temporarily until we do our Windows update. So once you've got these turned off, go back to your Windows and Settings. So go to Settings here update and security, and check for updates and see whether that update will now install on the system. 
If it does, then you've resolved your problem. Once you've done this, you can go back in to turn the firewall settings back on. Always have your firewall on. Click OK. You should see the green check marks there to say that it's enabled. OK, let's move on to the next step. We can go to CMD here, run this as administrator. A little black prompt box will open up here. And what we're going to do here, this is where you can type in here SFC space forward slash scan now. But we're going to be typing this one in DISM space forward slash online. And then we're going to do space forward slash. And we're going to do clean up dash image here. Just put dash in an image space forward slash restore health all one word you can use capitals in here if you want to it doesn't really matter whether you use capitals or not and then push enter and let that run and then you run system uh sfc scan now after this to make sure all of your error codes have gone if you've got issues or corrupted files next up is disabling secure boot this is related to a secure boot issue as well so go into settings on your system and then go into update and security here. And once you're inside here, I'm going to go to recovery. And then you see advanced startup here, restart now. Click on restart now and hit restart and get into your BIOS. If you would know how to get into your BIOS by tapping the F2 or delete key on restart, keep tapping it. And it will take you into your bias if you don't want to use this method whatever way suits you and then once you're into the bios you can disable secure boot once secure boot has been disabled you can then check windows updates get it updated once it's updated you can go back in and put secure boot back on it's a known issue that sometimes this workaround does work so from here what you need to do is go troubleshoot and go to advanced options Click on advanced options. From here, we're going to come all the way down to where it says UEFI firmware settings. Click on there. And this is just to get into the BIOS, guys. But if you know how to get into the BIOS, then use the restart and tap in F2 and delete key. Either one of those will get you into the BIOS. And then restart. And there we are. We're in the BIOS now. And once you're inside the BIOS, you need to go to your settings here. And what we're going to do is go to advanced or basic mode here. Go to your settings. And inside here, you can see this boot. Click on this one here. And you see boot mode selected. It's legacy plus UEFI. So you really want to use a secure boot off here. So I'm just showing you UEFI. And you've got legacy and UEFI. If you want to use both of these, you can do or you can use just UEFI. But once you've got that done, come down, and what we're going to do is look for Secure Boot here. So let me just show you how to get to Secure Boot. And then just disable Secure Boot. If your BIOS looks something like this, then go into here and disable Secure Boot here. And if your BIOS looks something like this, then make sure you see Secure Boot State. Make sure that is disabled. So whatever your BIOS looks like, that is what you'll need to do to make this work for you. If your BIOS is ASUS or something like that, you may see Secure Boot here. You can click on this and then just disable this feature and that should be good to go. So from here, once you're done, restart your PC, go in and check for updates and hopefully that update will come down and install on your PC. I didn't capture that part, but it did actually work disabling Secure Boot on Tony's PC and that was the fix for him and also disabling the firewall. And then we just re-enabled them afterwards. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Hope this video has been some sort of help and it has fixed your problem. If it has, give the video a like and also leave me a comment down below. It always helps with the YouTube algorithm. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or on our Discord server. Bye for now.